Today's pattern is template method. It is a behavioral pattern that allows you to stretch your class for different situations. To show it off, I'm going to provide an example of a newsletter. Normally, a newsletter can come in two different formats, HTML and plain text, because not every email client can support HTML. So we give both the versions and the email client knows which one to fetch. First off, we're going to generate a newsletter in HTML. We have a fixture that contains the result that we want. I'm just going to open this for you. So there you go. This is the template and somewhere in our newsletter generator, we're going to have this content being printed out. Let's go back here and the final result content is stored in this variable and it's going to be used to assert on the render method for our new generator. So let's do that really quick. I'm going to create a new generator inside the lib folder. Next, we're going to require it. So require generator here. And this will allow us to fetch the generator class from the test. So let's just open that. I'm going to type in a new class called generator. Let's not forget that this needs to be inside the newsletter module. This is just a design decision that I've taken into consideration for the test. It really doesn't matter here. It's just a matter of preference. You can do this without the module, but since we're at it, let's just go ahead. So our new generator is going to have a render method. So let's just call it in and run the tests. So we have one failing test. We expect a nil to respond to include. That means that the render method isn't returning anything. What we'll do now is we're simply going to pass in the exact content that we have in the fixture and pass it in. I'm just going to type in a here doc like this and the test will now pass. There you go. This is pretty weird for a first test. After a while, we just copied the result of the fixture and pasted it into the generator. Let's separate the title from the content by extracting these into their own methods. First off, we're going to paste in a header, which is going to be this. Let's just copy that real quick. And now we're going to extract the content to its own variable. So let's just define a content function. And there you go. Now we'll just need to pass in content here so that it renders correctly. The result, the test still passes, and now we have a header function and a content function. This way we can update one method without compromising the rest of the newsletter. This is actually pretty great because if you want to pass in a new option, for example, to render plain text or markdown if you want, we can simply pass in a if condition into each different method. Let's do that. I'm going to uncomment this test, which generates a report in Markdown. We have a new fixture in Markdown that I'm going to show you right up next. And the new generator should render this final result, but we need to distinguish between this one and the one in line 13. To do that, I'm going to pass in a new option called format. It's going to be a symbol. So in this case, it's going to be HTML and this one will be Markdown. Now we have a solid difference between one generator and the other, but we'll need to take care of that in the generator itself. I'm going to create a new initialize method, which takes a format. I'm simply going to store it in the format variable and we'll need to use it inside each different method. So in line 16, if the format is HTML, then it's going to print out this string. Otherwise, if the format is markdown, then we're going to print something else. In this case, it's just a pound sign and then hello world. Okay, just close the if condition here and I'll just try and run the test suite and notice we have an argument error regarding the constructor. I forgot to add in an at sign because we're messing with instance variables. I've saved and now I'm going to run the tests again. The first test is passing, but the second one is failing. We expected the whole string that we have now to include this. We're just missing a little because of the content method. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'll paste in the very same if condition. And if it's HTML, then it's going to print out that content. Otherwise, if it's markdown, then I'm simply going to print out Lauren Ipsum like this. 
That's just the content that we have here in line 27. Let's see if this works. Let me just close the if statement here and indent this right. Let's run the tests. And there you go. Both of them are now passing, but we have a terrible mistake here. Well, it's not a mistake, but it's a very bad code smell. If you recall from the Ruby refactoring course, you'll notice that this is very bad. We have the very same if condition spread across two different methods. This can be very dangerous because when you want to perform a change inside the if statement, you might forget that there's another one in another method. It's much better to change one single place rather than two or even more. We'll need to come up with a way to get rid of this if condition based on the format. That's where the pattern comes in. We'll need to use the template method pattern, which makes these two methods candidates to be signatures of this class. So we'll need to come up with a change in this. What we'll do is we'll get rid of this if statement and create a new class based off each different type. So instead of having generator.new HTML, we'll have something like this, double colon HTML.new, and we're going to render that. To do that, I'm going to require a generators folder slash HTML. So we're going to have a new HTML class, which inherits from this generator class here. The render method is going to stay untouched. The header and content methods will be implemented by each different subclass. The parent class is going to raise an error, which is going to be a not implemented error. This error exists in Ruby, so we'll just need to raise that. Also in the content method here too. So if we run the suite now, oh, okay, we need to add in the generators folder first, and inside that, an HTML.RB class. Let's move on with this first. Let's create a module newsletter, and inside we'll have an HTML class, which will inherit from generator. And now we have our very own generator that just handles the case of HTML. If I run the suite now, we have an error on naming. That's because I just made a mistake. Let me fix this really quick. Instead of having generator HTML, I'll pass in generators HTML. In this file, we're going to add in another module called generators because that's what the test says. And now we're going to inherit directly from it. Let's see if this works now. And now something is different. We are using a wrong number of arguments. We provided zero, but we needed one. Now, where is this coming from? From the very generator class here. Let's just go ahead and fix that. So if you see here in the HTML generator, it takes no parameters, but we actually need one. According to inheritance, we need to provide a format, but that's not exactly what we want anymore. So I'll just delete this and focus on this single test. And to do that, I'm going to skip this test as well and close it. Let's just focus on this one. Let's run the tests. And now we have not implemented error. That's great. It's going to call the render method here, but it's going to retrieve the header method, which is raising. That's when we delete this code and paste it right in the HTML class. So I'm just going to paste this in and type in the header method. Nothing else is required other than the content method, of course. But in this case, we are going to delete this and this. The HTML class is responsible for rendering only HTML. We don't need to worry about markdown for this class. The result should be okay, but we still have to handle the content case. Let's just take care of that really quick. I'm going to delete this entire block, save it, and paste it in to the content method here, just like this. Now the header and content methods are correctly defined in the context of our application. And so now when we run the tests, it is going to pass. That's great. The main focus of this pattern is to isolate the common behavior. In this class, the generic one, we are just typing in the signatures for what we need. If we need to add a different format for our newsletter, we already know that we need to have a header and a content just below. You define those methods that are abstract and unimplemented 
in the generic class. And so you create specific classes to implement those methods. Now all we need to do is create a similar class, but for Markdown. So I'm just going to copy this and paste them in a new markdown.rb file in the generators folder. I'm just going to open that and paste those in. In line three, I'm going to update this to markdown. And instead of printing HTML, I'm just going to print markdown. So let's just strip these tags out, this, this, and this. Okay, this is too ugly. Let me just paste something like this. And there you go, much cleaner. So now we focused everything related to Markdown in its own class. We saw the HTML class. We now have the Markdown class. And so it's safe to run the tests now. Let's just open this and unskip this test. The result should be a passing test, but it seems we have an error in the test. Of course, we need to pass in generators double colon markdown.new. Strip those characters here, and now we should be ready to go. Run the tests, and we don't have any markdown class being referenced here. Well, that's obvious. We'll need to require it on top. So generators slash markdown. And there you go. So let's sum this up really quick. We need to require everything, don't forget that, the base generator class, the HTML and Markdown classes as well. And for each different test, you create a new instance of that class, call the render method on it, and assert on the final value. And for each different format, we have created a specific class to hold that format. They have their own specification. In this case, HTML has their own set of tags, and Markdown has its own way of writing things. This is a header, and this is a content. We are not discussing how to fetch the content, we are just discussing the way to render it, to generate it. After all, this is a behavioral pattern and not creational. We'll deal with other creational patterns later on in the course, how to generate content and how to fetch it. Now let's take a look at the very last test. Let's open this line here and put it to the top. The template method requires that the base class is abstract. So it should be raising the not implemented error, which we already did. In the base class here, let me just open it up for you. Each different signature method is raising this error. So this test will automatically pass. We'll need to unskip the test here. So let me just skip that, run the tests, and it works. This means that for each different generator, if we call directly the header method on it or the content method, they should not be available because it's generic. It doesn't contain any information. And it's best to raise an error than passing in nil. So this is OK. We have a good design, and the template method pattern is applied correctly. So that's it for the template method pattern. I'll see you soon for the next pattern.